Hi, I'm Tim Webster and today I'm looking at workplace traffic management and how it can be used to avoid accidents in the workplace. Now, fortunately, work-related vehicle accidents are relatively rare, making up less than 10% of accidents overall annually. However, when they do happen, they're often extremely serious and are a major cause of workplace death. In 2017, 176 men and 14 women were killed in workplace accidents. Of these, 119 or 63% were related to vehicles, either as a driver, passenger or bystander. And 72% of these fatalities were in transport, postal and warehousing, agriculture, forestry and fishing and construction. And they're all areas where vehicles operate in close proximity to workers. In addition, the medium time off work after an employee was seriously injured in 2015-16 was 5.8 weeks and compensation payments are rising. And that's not taking into account injuries not requiring time off work, damage to vehicles, stock, machines and workplace infrastructure, repairs and maintenance and administrative time. There's also the very real possibility or probability of work cover investigations and legal proceedings. Even though the workplace fatality rate has halved since 2007, Safe Work Australia's Australian Work Health and Safety Strategy 2012 to 2022 aims to reduce the rate of serious injuries by a further 30% and fatalities by 20% by 2022. And supply chains and networks have been identified as one of these seven action areas. Aiming to reduce these figures, Safe Work Australia has produced a workplace traffic management guide that includes checklists for traffic hazards and traffic control measures and specific guides for warehouses, construction, shopping centres and events. What do you see as the potential dangers of the interaction of forklifts and pedestrians in the workplace? The clearest danger is of a pedestrian being killed or seriously injured if they're struck or, or hit by a forklift. Unfortunately, this potential is being realised far too often and pedestrians are being injured by forklifts and other mobile plant in workplaces. Pedestrians aren't always aware of the risks that forklifts pose to their safety and they're generally not provided with any information or training on forklift awareness when they're working in or around forklifts. So how does workplace traffic management actually work? Workplace traffic management, it's a combination of control measures. They're designed to eliminate, wherever possible, or reduce the risk of injury to people and pedestrians from interactions between mobile plants such as forklifts, vehicles or any other moving equipment. Traffic management controls need to be tailored to suit each workplace and they need to be developed in consultation with workers. Controls always need to consider the activities being carried out such as loading and unloading of vehicles, times of operation and all those considerations to ensure that the risks are adequately identified. Controls can include physical controls such as barriers, exclusion zones, speed limits, induction and training of people, signage and the safety of customers and visitors who arrive from outside the workplace. The control measures implemented should be in line with the hierarchy of controls. So is workplace traffic management mandatory in Australia? In short, yes. The longer answer is, under work health and safety legislation, it is a requirement to manage the risk to health and safety of people in a workplace that arise from any identified risks. The risk posed by interaction of pedestrians and moving plant, and that can be vehicles of all sizes, forklifts, any other mobile equipment, it's quite clear and it's resulted in a number of injuries over the years. There are also clear risks arising from the interaction of items of mobile plant with each other and particularly when it involves the risks of forklifts overturning. It's mandatory for all PCBUs to manage and control risks associating with moving items of equipment. There's some excellent guidance material available which provides comprehensive information on traffic management and as the regulator we're always willing to provide further information and answer any specific questions people have on work health and safety matters. What would be the consequences of failing to implement a traffic management policy? Well, consequences can include death or serious injury of people, uh, and that's whether they're workers, contractors or visitors to the workplace. Serious incidents must be notified to the Work Health and Safety Regulator, and an investigation could be undertaken by the regulator. This could result in a prosecution and conviction with a business looking at the possibility of large fines.
What is more important, signage or physical barriers? I don't think the conversation should be limited to just those two options. Uh, there's always a range of other options and methods of separation and control that need to be considered. However, to provide an answer to that question, it really depends on the specific risks you're trying to control. Where you're attempting to provide a separation between pedestrians that they're in the vicinity of moving plant, then physical barriers will always be the preferred option. They should by no means be the only control, as control measures should also consider safe operating procedures that include any associated controls, because pedestrians can always cross or walk around barriers. If you're trying to implement a driver safe zone, both physical separation and some signage to identify the zone for drivers not familiar with the site can play an important part. The simplest way to reduce work-related vehicle accidents is to keep vehicles apart from people, stock, machines and infrastructure. So, special consideration has been given to places where vehicles and people operate in close proximity. These include such as loading and unloading bays, parking areas and pedestrian crossings. It is also important to consider procedures such as reversing, manoeuvring, turning blind corners and negotiating bottlenecks. The guide lists four major steps. Find out what could cause harm, assess the risk, take action to control the risk, and check your control measures. The guide also gives examples of traffic control measures, including overhead walkways, permanent high impact and low impact barriers, temporary barriers, and walkways marked by painted lines and bollards. Now, each of these must be fit for purpose, and each has upfront and ongoing costs and provides greater or lesser protection from accidents. In addition, administrative controls such as scheduling delivery times and installing warning signs and personal protective equipment such as high-vis clothing can be used in conjunction with all of these. The guide makes it clear that operators of facilities need to consider all possible control measures and decide on those that are reasonably practicable while acknowledging cost constraints. The bad news is that this lack of specific direction appears to have led many Australian companies to take a least cost approach to workplace traffic management, an approach that still leaves the workplace in danger. Because while painted lines and temporary barriers do provide a visual cue for segregation of vehicles and pedestrians, they really don't provide any protection against a runaway forklift. Stay tuned for episode two and I'll tell you exactly what I mean.